So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how we write formulas in chemistry. Uh, the big idea of formulas is it's a nice shortcut way of representing chemical reactions uh, rather than writing out all the words. Um, once you know the system, then it becomes a really useful, useful tool. Okay, so just to um, go back to the last video, we talked about sodium chloride, um, and we need to talk about Fu. So Fu can stand for a lot of different things. Um, in this case, it stands for a formula unit. And the idea of a formula unit is the smallest ratio of ions in that compound. So for example, sodium chloride, you've got sodium that's got a positive charge, chloride that's got a negative charge, so you just need one and one of each to write the, form, the smallest formula unit, which would be NaCl. Um, so not all of them are one-to-one, -one, or a ratio of one-to-one, -one. some of them are quite, there's quite more actually that aren't one-to-one -one than actually are one-to-one, -one. Um, and I'll show you some examples. Uh, but for now though, formula unit, Fu, uh, means um, smallest ratio of ions in that substance. Uh, so we looked at ionic bonding in the last video, and uh, it's the idea of a positive and negative charge, uh, cation and anion, uh, bonded together. Um, we'll be using this concept of crisscross, which if you know your rap from the early 90s, um, big uh, rap band, and we'll sh I'll show you the video in class, because, um, well, you have to, really. <clears throat> so, formula units and formulas. So when we write the um, formula for sodium chloride, um, you've got something that's got a po positive one charge, something that's got a negative one charge, they cancel out to give you zero, that will give us a formula. Uh, so we just write it as NaCl. So the idea of crisscross is, imagine the invisible one, an invisible one here and here, uh, plus one, minus one. This one would come down here uh, to go there. This one would come down here to go there. We don't write the ones because it's like writing 1x in algebra, you just write x. Um, but imagine that this number comes here, this number comes here, it's crisscrossing, going to the opposite location. Um, and so the, the goal of writing the formula is to write a balanced uh, formula so there's no extra charge, there's no net charge. So plus 1 and minus 1 gives you 0, so that's a net charge of 0. That's the simplest example that we've got. So let's look at one that's um, a little bit more... Uh, complex. Um, let's look at Mg and Cl minus. So I should have mentioned when I had sodium chloride up here, but sodium loses one electron, it's in group one on the periodic table. Uh, chloride, chlorine gains one, it's in group seven. So each element is trying to complete its, um, complete its energy level through losing or gaining. Um, covalent bonding is obviously sharing, um, but um, ionic bonding losing and gaining electrons. So magnesium is in group two, so it's got two electrons in its outer energy level, so it loses those two when it bonds. Group three would lose three, uh, and so on. Non-metals gain electrons, metals lose, so that's important to remember. So you've got magnesium and chloride bonded together. You could look at these two and go, well, say to yourself, I need two of these for every one of these because this is twice the value. Um, so maybe scratch work or in your head you're thinking well all right so if i have two chlorides that balances out the plus two plus two minus one minus one gives you a net charge of zero uh, so that all balances out the shortcut crisscross version is to say i can just bring this one down here but i don't need to write the one it's invisible and then this two would go with the chlorine um, so crisscross so the one comes here and the two goes here Usually the, notate, the system that we have for notation is the charges are written up above as superscripts and the formula, um, the numbers are written as subscripts. So that would be magnesium chloride. So um, let's look at another example. Same sort of idea. The crisscross system always works. It's the, the exception to the rule is that it always works and uh, not every rule has that. So let's look at aluminium oxide. So you can either check the polyatomic ion list that I'll give you and I'll explain what polyatomic ions are in a second. You could look, look up the ions on there or you could look up aluminium on the periodic table, see that it's in group 3 and know that it's going to lose 3 electrons. It's also a metal so as metals lose electrons they all have a positive charge. 
the group number tells you how many electrons it loses. Um, oxygen's in group uh, six, so it needs to gain two. So that would be the ion that it forms, it gains two electrons. So now that you can see you've got odd numbers, um, and so how are you going to figure this out? Well, crisscross is one way, um, but the long, the long version is to say, so I need to add more negative charge because I've got plus one and minus two, uh, sorry, plus three and minus two. So if I add another oxide, I've got negative four and plus three, so they don't cancel out. I add another aluminium, that's six plus six and minus four, so then I need to add another minus two. So the goal is to get to a charge of overall charge of zero, or a net charge of zero. Um, that's the, the longer way to do it, which is perfectly fine. The shortcut way is to do crisscross and just bring this two next to the aluminium and this three next to the oxide or next to the oxygen. Um, when non-metals bond, the suffix changes. Uh, we'll learn more about that later on as well. Um, but just to get an idea of writing the formulas and getting into balancing equations, um, this is how we're going to get started. So, slightly more complex example, you need a different ratio um, to get to uh, a charge of zero. Shortcut method always works, crisscross, bring the numbers down to the opposite place. If you're a more visual, um, visual learner and you like to see it laid out that way, uh, that's another way to think about it too. Either way, it gives you the same result. Okay, so let's go even more complex. So, um, let's look at polyatomic ions. So, um, I mean, you can look at the word and go poly means many, um, atoms, different types of atoms. Um, and, and actually these are all ions. So they're ions that are made up of different elements is a different way to look at polyatomic ions. They're very, very common. Um, some common ones are Ammonium. So if you take ammonia and dissolve it in water, it forms ammonium and it gains a hydrogen and it has a positive charge. So you've got one nitrogen and four hydrogens bonded together, but the overall thing has a charge of plus one. Um, sulfate, another common substance, is a negative two. So it's one sulfur, one oxygen. So you'll notice uppercase letters next to each other helps you figure out if it's polyatomic or if it's an element. Um, and so one sulfur and four oxygens bonded together, um, overall thing has a negative two charge. So let's look at these two and, and try and figure out a way that we can um, write the formula for ammonium sulfate. Um, so ammonia has a plus one charge and sulfate has minus two. So I need two of these for every one of these. And so long way around is to think, think about it this way, two of these for every one of these. Uh, Crisscross also works, but how do you write the actual formula? Um, the golden rule is that you don't mess with the subscripts ever. Um, so I have two of these, so I use parentheses around it to show that there's two. When I just have one, I don't need parentheses, I can just write the uh, iron out again. So two of these for every one of these. This is how you'd handle it if you've got um, already got a number there. You don't mess with that number, but you need to show that there's two of them, you use parentheses. If you don't use parentheses, it looks like 42, which is ridiculous. So parentheses is the way that we uh, handle that. Um, so the big idea of formula writing, or FU is, um, or formula units, um, is we're trying to write the lowest common ratio of um, elements bonded together, or ions bonded together. Uh, so crisscross always works. And it's a very, really nice and simple method to use. All you do is bring the opposite charges to the opposite place. Um, when you're using these fancy looking substances like ammonium or sulfate, if you need more than one of those, use parentheses and then put the number on the outside. And what else to say? Yeah, your overall charge should be zero. Um, so you can do the, do the uh, math in your head. And that's it. Polyatomic ions, formula units, FU, crisscross. Crisscross is a, a really great way to, uh, to write formulas and we'll be using them quite a lot.